we are getting into our dry clothes, Kevin is making us all sandwiches for lunch. Peanut butter and jelly for the princess, turkey for me, and rotisserie chicken for him. Nothing like being a short order cook, huh, babe? That's right. All right, so we just got out of the pool. We've been spending most of our mornings in the pool the past couple of weeks. It has been really, really nasty every afternoon. Those Florida summer rain showers have been moving in. So this way we can get outside and enjoy being together and kind of, you know, soaking up the outdoors and still stay cool in the pool. So we've been spending about one to two hours every morning in the pool. And so instead of our morning basket being with breakfast, it's kind of pushed back and been happening during lunch. So that's what's going to happen today. We just got out of the pool. I'm already in dry clothes. Um, Emily's changing into dry clothes. And then we'll go ahead and sit down and do lunch with our morning basket. And then she has her Lego class today. And normally after her Lego class, she tends to want to continue building and playing Legos for a few hours. So after morning basket and lunch, we'll probably just do a few things uh, before she moves on to her class. And then normally that's what she does for the whole rest of the day. So that's what's going on right now. Annie read breathlessly. Jack and Annie, please meet me at the treehouse as soon as possible, Teddy. Let's go, said Jack. Annie put the message back in the bag and she and Jack sped up the street. When they reached the edge of the Frog Creek Woods, they turned and rode their bikes between the trees, bouncing over roots, pine needles, and leaves. Teddy hasn't come to Frog Creek in a long time, said Annie. I know, said Jack. I hope nothing's wrong back in Camelot, said Annie. I hope Morgan and Merlin are all right. Yeah, and Kathleen, said Jack. And Penny, said Annie. And Arthur, and well, all of Camelot. That's a lot to worry about. Mm-hmm. If I had that tree house, I would go back to the dinosaurs. Yeah. All right, let's read Swimming with Sharks, The Daring Discoveries of Eugenie Clark. Who wants to swim with sharks? Not me. Mm -hmm. Little Jeannie stood at the railing and pressed her face against the mysterious glass tank. Most people saw piercing eyes, rows of sharp teeth, vicious, bloodthirsty killers. Now, Eugenie Clark, she saw sleek, graceful fish gliding through the water. swim. The bat fish is such a fish, it lies on the ocean floor. It is one of the oddest looking fish in the sea. The bat fish has a brood flat body. It has large fins that spread out like scales. Instead, it has small bony lumps all over the upper surface of its body. The batfish also has a pointed snout. When you look down on the fish, it looks 
like it looks a bit like an arrow. The bat fish has two fins that look like legs. It uses those fins to walk. Then looking for food, it digs in the sand and hides in the house. It lies very still and it jumps up to swallow its prey. If danger is near, the bat fish covers itself with sand. If it, if it must flee, it will hurry across the sand, much like a crab does. What covers up? What covers the upper part of the bat fish? Small scale, sharp fins, small bony lumps. Yes! Okay, so we got just a little bit of work done, and Emily is starting her class right now. Um, while she does her class, I'm probably going to get a little bit of work in. I have a ton of emails to respond to. My email inbox has been bombarded lately with so many new homeschoolers coming, which is a blessing, and I love every one of you. And I promise if you're one of those people waiting to hear from me, I am working tirelessly to get back to you. So that's what I'm going to do while she is um, doing her class, is probably spend that hour responding to emails this afternoon. Are all clocks sold displaying the same time? Answer is true, or at least they should all say at the same time. Here's why. Uh, there are two reasons. One, when a clock is for sale in the store, they do not want to wear down the battery by having it ticking. So they will pick a sick once one time and then put either like pull the battery or not even put a battery in or put a little plastic between the battery and the contact so that the battery is not dead when you take it home. Um, and so it was decided that this time right here with the hands at 10 and two was the most pleasing time to look at on a clock. Kevin is grilling out for dinner. Doesn't that look amazing, you guys? Pork chops and potatoes. And we were going to eat outside, but it is pouring down rain. So we will probably watch a movie before bed. You want earthworms in the bed? No. <laughs> it's the worm. <laughs> what? What? Are they out? Yeah, they're out. Come on. <laughs> Let's see what happened with the worms with Jane. Okay. And where they would go on their next adventure. Peter caught the medallion and looked over at his older sister. Hey, Mary, he said. Heads or tails? Mary looked up from an old dusty book 
I don't have time to play games. I'm reading. Peter shrugged and turned to Great Uncle Solomon. He was sitting in his leather chair reading a book, too. Peter had no idea why Mary and Great Uncle Solomon had, so, had read so many big, boring books. Hey, Great Uncle Solomon, he said. Do you want to play Heads or Tails? Great Uncle Solomon put his book down and adjusted his round glasses. Sure. And speaking of tails, where's Hank? I let him go outside to use the bathroom, said Peter. He put the medallion on his thumb. Heads or tails? Decide with the star is heads. Great Uncle Solomon leaned forward in his chair and rubbed his bushy white mustache. Heads. Peter flicked the gold medallion high in the air. Be careful, Mary said. Don't drop it. Peter rolled his eyes. I won't. But he did. The medallion slipped through his fingers and rolled across the wood floor straight towards the front door. I warned you, said Mary, turning the page of her book.